Um, so example three here, and if you need a more basic example, then uh, watch one of the previous examples. But yeah, um, I assume that you know how to start since this is example three. So let's get on with this. Uh, first, um, I have the graph of um, uh, y equals x squared plus x plus one here. So this is y equals x squared plus x plus one, and it'll come into play shortly. Um, but yeah, uh, we know that um, to do these uh, limit proofs, what we need to start with is um, the fact that if the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, then this will automatically need to imply that the difference between f of x and l, the limit value, be less than epsilon, yeah? Okay, cool. And we have to adopt this to our particular situation, uh, which in this case involves a being 1 and um, f of x being the cubic that I just circled and l being 6. So adopting this to our situation, we require that whenever x minus 1 is less than delta that we have um, um, 4x cubed plus 2 minus 6 f of x minus l be less than epsilon. And as always, the way that we're going to create this implication is by uh, manipulating this and figuring out a way to um, come up with a nice relationship between delta and epsilon, which often involves, in the manipulation of this, getting a factor that says absolute value of x minus 1 is less than something. Uh, you'll see. So um, now, um, to start, we could uh, rewrite this slightly uh, shorter as the following, which is this, right? And um, next, we could um, factor out the 4 and write absolute value of x cubed minus 1 is less than epsilon. And now, we can use the fact that x cubed uh, minus 1 is equal to um, x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1, difference of cubes factoring, right? And right, the, this is what we've got. But then um, we know that absolute value of a times b is equal to absolute value of a times absolute value of b. So using that, we could write that um, we have 4 times absolute value of x minus 1 times absolute value of x squared plus x plus 1 is less than epsilon. Now, the absolute values around x squared plus x plus 1 are unnecessary because, as you can see, x squared plus x plus 1 is always positive but we'll just keep them. In any case, um, next we can write absolute value of x minus 1 is less than epsilon divided by 4 times um, absolute value of x squared plus x um, plus 1. And we got from here to here clearly by dividing both sides of this statement um, by um, 4 times the absolute value of x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, cool. Uh, now, um, as I said, you know, we want to get to something that looked like that, and we're there. So it's pretty tempting to think that delta is epsilon divided by 4 times absolute value of x squared plus x plus 1. The only thing we have left to do is to get rid of that expression involving x. And this is how we could do that. Uh, we make an assumption about delta. In the previous examples, I've explained why this assumption makes sense, so I won't explain here. But um, let's say delta equals 1. Then if delta equals 1, then uh, we've kind of um, narrowed down our uh, interval along x. So um, we're going to say that we have this. Well, then that would mean that we have negative 1 is less than x minus 1 is less than 1, which would mean that we've got 0 is less than x is less than 2. Yeah, OK. And for x values like these, then um, we should have the um, x squared plus x um, plus 1, um, whether in absolute values or not, be uh, less than 7 and be greater than 1 uh, for x's in there, right? That we have, uh, and I'll put the absolute values uh, so that it's easier to substitute or easier for some of you, perhaps. But anyway, yeah, so if x's are in here, then this is true. Um, so we're saying that this guy here is um, less than 7. So then, uh, if we know that, we can translate this statement to read as follows, which is absolute value of x minus 1 is less than epsilon divided by 
4 times 7. Um, and silly to write 4 times 7, so we'll write epsilon over 28. So here, uh, we're done with our proof. We'll check that we've picked the correct um, delta, but now we're just going to say uh, let delta be delta equal uh, the minimum of 1 or epsilon over 28. So if for your choice of epsilon, um, 1 has a pick of delta sufficient, great. But if your epsilon is very small, then you could do epsilon over 28 um, as being delta and we'll, we'll do better. So um, when epsilon over 28 is smaller than 1, then we'll, we'll pick it, right? Okay, cool. All right. Um, all right. Um, so, so then the only thing left to do is for me to check that what we've done makes sense. Uh, which is that we've picked the correct um, the, the correct um, delta right for your epsilon and and so and so um, we know that um, the checking involves this which is uh, I'll title it here so checking we've gotten the correct delta means that whenever this is true we need to imply that right now if this is true notice that this is true x minus 1 is less than um, epsilon over 28 because we just said delta is epsilon over 28 cool but if what I just wrote in blue is true then the following is true which is 28 times absolute value of x minus 1 is less than epsilon but wait if this is true then the following is true which is um, 4 times 7 times absolute value of x minus 1 is less than epsilon. But wait, we would said that um, x squared plus x plus 1 in absolute values or not is less than 7. So then I could write 4 I could write 4 times um, absolute value of x squared plus x plus 1 uh, times absolute value of x minus 1 is less than epsilon if I already had this. Why? Because, well, since this is already smaller than epsilon, if I replace the 7 with something that's smaller than it, then this thing should remain less than epsilon, yeah? Okay, that makes sense. In other words, I replaced 7 there with this, and that's all I did, and the latter, this guy, is smaller than 7, so if this is smaller than epsilon, well, this too is smaller than epsilon, right? Okay, cool. But then now I could write the following, which is 4 times by a reverse application of this absolute value rule and using the commutative property of multiplication, I could write x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. And doing this, I could write is less than epsilon. But wait, that means I have 4 times, remember, these two polynomials multiply to, or uh, yes, these two polynomials multiply to x cubed minus 1, so I have 4 times absolute value x cubed minus 1 is less than epsilon. But wait, that means that I have absolute value 4x cubed minus 4 is less than epsilon, which means I have this absolute value of 4x cubed plus 2 minus 6 is less than epsilon because 2 minus 6 is negative 4. Yeah? Cool. All right. So we've done the check in addition to the proof, and I hope you're satisfied. Keep watching because there are a few more interesting and harder examples to come. Take care.